Hi everybody, it's Maggie. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit how to bring out some selective detail in an image and how to do selective sharpening in Photoshop. And the reason I'm doing this is that uh, my new friend Mo, who lives all the way in British Columbia, said to me, uh, Maggie, how do you take an image that has, uh, is very soft looking and make it tack sharp? Uh, she was under the impression that if she did this, that she wouldn't have to throw away any images anymore. And uh, the sad news is that I do throw away images. And uh, unless you have an image that you actually want to be soft, and sometimes you do, um, your image needs to be in focus to start with. So if your image is not in focus, forget it. I don't care uh, how much you work on it. Uh, a sharpened out of focus image will look like a sharpened out of focus image and it won't look good. So um, we're going to do, I'm going to show you a little before and after before we start. This will be the image that I'm working on, this wonderful, nice, gorgeous dog that was uh, at a little lake this summer that I took a picture of. So this is the image and this is the before. So I'm going to show you an after. Whoop, there you go. Can you see here? Look at this image and not at the layer palette. Just look at the image, look at the eye and the hair is here. And this is before and this is after. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is duplicate our image. So we come up here and we right click and choose duplicate image and we'll call it screen and press OK. Now we'll come here into our blending modes and if we click on this little arrow and open it up we have all our blending modes here and we're going to choose screen screen will lighten all our image um, the next thing we want to do since we don't want to have our image look like this we just want to bring focus to certain areas we're going to put a mask and the mask here is a layer mask and it's a square with a circle in it what the mask does it acts as an eraser so that when you use black it will erase whatever you have done on this layer and show what is underneath. If you use white it will bring back anything you have done on this layer. So obviously since we don't want all of this the first thing we'll do is go over here and choose our black and go into our bucket and open it up, our paint bucket, make sure it's not the gradient tool and just click and it'll come back to what it was before. Now to bring back the details that we want lightened, we're going to use uh, a small brush right here. Um, I set it to 12 so that because I want to lighten the iris and as you see here it's black and white. We're going to paint on with white to bring back the details that we want from the screening. So you can either press this to go back and forth or you can press the X on your keyboard. So let's make it a little bit bigger and with your opacity at 100% I like a low flow. Everybody has a different way of doing this, this is just the way that I'm used to. Um, I'm going to come here and at the bottom of the iris, not everywhere, just at the bottom, I am going to just paint in a tiny bit and right here where the highlight is I want that to be very light. And that little bit is going to make the eye so much sharper looking and if you want to see the difference here I'll close the eye here and you see that was before and this is after look how much more alive it looks okay so now I can make the brush a little bit bigger and maybe push this a tiny bit and okay we'll come here at areas where there's a bit of lightness already but I want to help bring in the detail so I'm going to bring in a little bit here and a little bit at the edges of the fur I want the wet parts to look wet so I'm going to really push them a little bit and I'm looking for areas where the light see right here we have a little bit of light wrapping around 
if I bring that in just a little bit here very light flow and just a little bit over the hairs here and just over here help bring this will also help give it some dimension make it look less flat so here a little bit over here and let's make it smaller again and whoops go in here just go over little details don't push it too much just a bit if you look you'll see a little bit don't go over areas that are dark we're trying to make the emphasis so if you go over everything you're gonna lose the effect so just a little bit here and just bring in a little bit of detail a little bit here a little here yeah that'll look good here make sure that's showing up nicely now before that's now and this is what it was before and this is after okay so now we have this portion done we're going to come back and now add some darkness to other parts by using multiply okay now to multiply we need another layer so I'm going to come on this one again right click choose duplicate layer and press OK and take it and let's move it to the top of the stack now it's hiding everything that's underneath it at the moment but now we're going to set it to multiply so everything is pretty dark but as you can see what we have underneath is still there and we're going to mask it all out just like we did with the screen so now we come back we do our layer mask again make sure that we're on it come to our bucket tool choose black and dump now everything comes back just like it was right here with only the screen before we did anything else so we're only working on what's underneath so now what we want to do is emphasize the iris here and not the iris I mean the pupil and a little bit under the eye and you'll see I am going to do just like I did before but I'll make sure that you're on see you have to have that little white border going around this portion do not work on this this is the actual image and this is your mask so we're going to click on this go into white use our brush again now it's still nice and small and just come here where the uh, where the pupil is and darken it a bit don't go overboard just darken it a bit now let's make this a little bigger and just we always have a little bit see this overhang of skin here it does create a bit of a shadow under the eyelid and we should just push on that a tiny bit now where would we need a little bit of could just go here and uh, add a little emphasis on certain areas. I'm gonna make it small again. And just like we did before, just pass very lightly. If you don't have a, a, a digital brush, like a Wacom brush um, and a tablet, uh, you don't have to have it. But I'm going to tell you, if you like to move very naturally with your hand, this is so much better than a mouse. So just come over here and push in a little bit. And uh, again, a little bit bigger. We want to have the contrast here. Just a bit. I'm going to push it a tiny bit in the wet part because that will make it look wetter. Contrast makes things look shiny. So there you go. And a little bit here. You know, you can do a little of this or hardly any bit. I usually tweak. <laughs> I just tweak and tweak and tweak. That's probably why you think my images are sharp because I spent a lot of time working on them. So here, let's bring in a little bit of the texture gonna help give it some dimension to a little bit here there you go a little bit there just a tiny bit if I used opacity 
um, I would, I would, I couldn't just keep on going. I would have to lift my mouse or my brush every single time. Okay, so we're pretty much done with that. See, this is the difference with the one before and this is the difference with everything. Now I could merge all this if I wanted to because if we're going to sharpen we need to merge but um, a, a good practice if you like to keep your layers that have something uh, that they're still available to you if you really want to reopen your PSD file is uh, to press Alt to, to be on your top layer to press Alt and come here where this little triangle is right here and click and move all the way down and press merge visible and that will merge everything that you have underneath into one layer but allow you to keep your separate layers okay so we're pretty much done and it's time for us to do the final sharpening it's selective sharpening you would have already done the basic sharpening that you want through the entire image and uh, why we use selective sharpening is that you see all these there's portions of this image that we don't want to sharpen we only want to sharpen what is important to us in this image so if you had a really pretty image with a nice bouquet behind you wouldn't go and start adding sharpening to that it is the opposite of the reason why you would even want the nice soft bouquet in the background uh, many people use unsharp mask it is probably the standard of what most people use i'm not a huge fan of unsharp mask i find that it creates noise, it sharpens that noise, it creates jaggedies, and I don't know, maybe for some people it works. Obviously, there are people that use many different ways of sharpening, and I don't always sharpen this way, but most of the time I do. So I'm showing you what I usually do. So the reason we did the merge visible was that we cannot sharpen on top of these these layers here because they would just sharpen the the multiply layer and sharpen the screen layer so we need it either to merge the entire image or do a merge visible so now that we have the merge visible on this layer i am going to duplicate it again and on this layer here i am now going to go all the way up to filter and other and choose high pass Okay, so that turns your image just gray, but this is because of the radius. Do you see here it's 0 0.1? We're going to pull it up until we can see the details that we want. For me, I'm going to pull it up pretty high because I want here to be able to see the eye really in focus. and. Right here, you see this halo? We're not going to worry about it because we're doing selective sharpening and we are not going to go over this edge. I'm going to show you, I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to show you on a small dog. This is the same image, but just 500 pixels for the web. If I put, um, I need, whoops, <laughs> I should go back. I need to put the filter back on. Here, high pass filter. See how 6.5 is very strong. So I can pull it down. It all depends on how big your image is. So you wouldn't want as much on a small image. So you just, you look at it and you want to see how sharp you want it to be. You can do it just a little bit, do it a lot. That's up to you. Okay, so this, we're not going to work on this. We're going to work on the bigger one so we can all see what we are doing. The next thing we want to do is set it to a blending mode. Now, you have a choice of using overlay, you can use soft light, you can use hard light, vivid light. It all gives a different effect. I tend to like soft light. I find it's the most natural. I'm going to show you what it does. This is soft light. Now, in this image, it could almost work just like this, but what I want to do is just sharpen up this area here. I don't want to sharpen any of this, that's just too much. If I set it to hard light, 
it's very, very harsh. Now I can lower the opacity, but why would I go through all this trouble? And I could leave it like this if I want really uh, to show the texture more than anything else. The difference is that soft light as a blending mode, it takes, it looks at the image underneath and it takes all the dark tones and multiplies them and then it takes all the light tones and screens them. Hard light does almost the same thing except that it doesn't look at the tones, it looks at the dark colors and the light colors. So you get a stronger, uh, punchier effect. I don't tend to use this, I find this looks a little over sharpened. But if you were going to do an image where let's say um, it's a, a knife blade to somebody's throat and you really want it to, to look threatening and you want the the knife edge to look like it's really menacing and very, very sharp, this would be the way to go. But see, you could use vivid light, which is another kind of way, or you could use pen light everyone that you use it's just because these blending modes they are basically filters they tell the the program what portions of the image that they should either darken or brighten or dodge and burn so we're going to set it back to soft light because that's the way i do it and um i am going to put up again a layer mask right here and come back here to the black and take my bucket and uh, take it off. Do you see how soft it was? We didn't even notice, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see. I am going to take my brush and this time I'm going to put up the flow really high to 100% and make my brush bigger and here I'm going to go. Oh, sorry, I'm going to need to turn it to white. Make sure you're on the mask right here. And whoa, right over that eye. Right now, over the nose. I'm going to go over some of the hair here. Now here, as you see, it's not really in focus. What, what advantage is there to me to show you that sharpened? There is none. So I'm going to go over the hair here, over here, down here, right here over the tongue that I did the sharpening over here there you go and we're done now we want to see what the difference is we're going to merge this down merge it down this is the top two there you go that's before and this is after this is before and that's after isn't that cool yep yeah. <laughs>